assignment time. Before I give you this assignment, which is building a biped character, let's look at uh, something. First off, know that these are concept shapes. And why, why do I call them concept shapes? Because I'm just roughing out a character here. In some cases, however, though, you know, it's not really concept work. Let's say if I use this piece for illustration, I build this character, I move him around, and I render him out. That's illustration work. It doesn't really matter if part A and part B ever get joined. Okay. If it was animation terms, you have a small chance of saying, well, um, this would never work. Because if I move this finger down via joint, it might have some distortion. It might not, depending on how you skin the character. These are all new terms if you're new to 3D. But keep in mind that I'm just roughing out the character and the premise of this assignment is to not get you hung up on developing a full-bred game-developed character. It's just the fact that I'm getting you interested in shape and putting shape next to each other joining them together, manipulating them, sculpting them a little bit, and then moving on. There are steps to this. Oftentimes, uh, a new 3D student just jumps right in and says, hey, I'm going to make a 3D character. It's going to be amazing. And then their downfall is always the same thing. You know, they might have developed a character and they're unhappy with it or totally get frustrated with it because they never really learned the basics of shapes. It's just like drawing. Uh, you're never really good at drawing uh, until you learn your shapes and gestures and um, flow. Okay. So one thing I do want to show you with this hand is the fact that, you know, think outside the box. If I have this finger right here and if I hold uh, Shift D to duplicate it and then move it off to the side, I can take this finger and I can then join it all together. I can move its pivot point somewhere right here by object, transform, origin to 3D cursor. And then I can make duplicates of this. It's not really hard. Like I have this one right here. If I take and lay four next to each other, If I was making a, f a concept with three or four fingers, if it was just three, I can just simply use three. It all depends what you're developing. Again, uh, this is just a biped character, so I'm not putting any stipulation on how many fingers or toes it has. Uh, that's up to you. Of course, <laughs> that being said, I bet every student in my class is going to develop uh, a three-pawed character uh, with two fingers and a thumb. <laughs> Just the nature of the beast. Uh, notice what happened here. Notice this one has these nice sculpts, but this one does not. Okay. So be very careful. Be aware of what happens. Uh, again, you're going to have to apply these then duplicate it and then move the origin and then you can duplicate it and that way you get your sculpt Okay, and after the fact, let's say I'll just rough this out really quick. Uh, I'll get all the fingers there and put them all close to each other. Then take this hand and sort of scale it up and squish it across. I'm not worried about how big this hand is getting because believe it or not, everything can be what scaled. That's right. So, uh, after the fact that I got all these
fingers and thumb in order, I can join them all, and then I can scale them all at one time. Use your hand as reference. That's important. There we go. Now, I'll produce a thumb here later, but what I want to do is just kind of show you this. Make sure nothing has a modifier on it. So apply all modifiers. None of these have modifiers. Good. If I wanted to take these three shapes, I could take and scale these up. Just like that. And I can start looking for uh, what's, what side of the hand this is. Okay, If this is the uh, left hand, it's going to be the pinky on this side. So this, this one might be a little bit smaller, depending. I'm going to undo the change here. I'm going to concentrate on these since they have the pivot point moved correctly. There we go. Before I join all these together, you know, I like making duplicates of things. So I'm going to put this to the side and make a duplicate of the entire shape. Why? Well, what to think, think about later on, what are you going to have to develop? That's right, a foot. <laughs> so if you have this to the side, at least now you're thinking ahead of time. All right, let's join all these together. Okay, and I'll scale them all together. I'll scale it uniformly. And I'll start moving that over to the actual model. Again, pretend that there's actually thumb in here somewhere. This shape's going to get in my way real quick and become annoying. What can I do about that? Um, there's actually a uh, command I want to show you in the menu first. It's hide selected. Okay, I'll let you find the hotkey for that. Be a good homework assignment for you. Okay, just moving this hand, rotating it around. And you can see this is no big deal. Nothing that can't be done. Again, it's just between local and global that you have to worry about if you change the angle. Okay, see what happens if I scale it too far or into the negative region, uh, it'll start freaking out. Okay. So it looks like it could go on the other side, so I'm just going to rotate that back around. Good. All right, so I think I've done enough for you. I don't want to do too much as far as this is concerned because I want to leave some work for you. Once I match these two forms, I then will kind of sculpt this one to this one. All right. So enjoy the assignment. Have fun with it. Do not get hung up on details. Make it very low res. Just concentrate about overall shape of things. And yada, yada, yada. I'll leave you to your work. Enjoy. When you are done, please turn in your Blender file. And remember, again, it doesn't have to look like mine. I want, you to, I want it to look like your work, not my work. Enjoy. Enjoy.